Welcome. Today we're going to talk about repetitive throwing. That is the art and craft of creating multiple pieces that are more or less the same. But if you try this, you probably know that it's not so easy. So in this video, I'm going to teach you a few tricks of how you can get at least closer to that goal. So let's move on with that. I don't do that much repetitive throwing. I prefer to do unique pieces of art, if you like, <laughs> but unique pottery pieces. I think it's more interesting. And anyway, I can't even compete with IKEA and everybody in China that can do pottery so much cheaper. But there are certain kinds of pots that I do like to be, if not unique, then at least similar in shape and size. That is uh, true for most of the kitchenware I do, like, like cups. I, I don't mind if they're not identical, but I do like that they have looked sort of like a, a size and a shape that is similar. The same thing goes for, for the plates that uh, I've been doing recently. I have a couple of videos about how I make them. I do like them to be similar size, similar shape, that sort of function better, and they also stack better when I put them in my cabinet. So today, I'm going to show you how I do that. If you want to make pieces that are identical, or more or less identical, the first and most important step is to use the same amount of clay. So depending on what you're doing, maybe you're doing cups or plates or something, you have to decide on how much clay you want to use. Maybe you want to run a few tests first to find out how much clay it takes to make a certain size and shape. But then when you know that you should weigh all your clay, prepare clay balls with the exact same amount of clay. And it's actually important that it is exactly the same. So be careful with that. Store the clay balls in a box uh, or wrap them up in plastic. Somewhere they don't dry out. Now you're ready to throw. When I start working on a new shape, I usually begin by just freestyling it. So I take whatever amount of clay that I think will be sufficient for the type of pot, size and shape that I want, and I weigh it. I may try different uh, amounts of clay, but I always weigh them so that once I have the shape that I want with the wall thickness and everything that I like, then I can go back and say, okay, this is how much clay I have to use for that. After I decided on the pot that I want to make, and I tested it with different <laughs> amounts of clay, and I'm ready to repeat the throwing, I will do some measuring. And there are different ways that you can do that. You can, of course, just use a ruler and uh, measure it and try and, uh, and get to the same size. That is a little bit tricky to deal with. An easier way is to make a caliber, use a caliber like this. You can uh, measure the width or the height, depending on, on how you use it. That is also Ah, takes a little more effort. I often use uh, sticks, so I make these sticks. This is for plates, so I made a mark here with tape, so I know exactly this is the width of a certain kind of plate that I make. This is much easier because I can just put it down and, and measure it. So I don't need any numbers, I don't need anything, I just have this. This is a, a good way to do it. A lot of people are also using, uh, including me, these kind of um, tools where you can, you can set it and, uh, to a certain height and a certain uh, width and then you throw by that. And that's what we're gonna to use today for the cups we're gonna make. However, even the best tools, even the best measurement tool is not enough to do proper repetitive throwing. I don't know if you heard of a thing called muscle memory. That is a bit of a funny thing because you would think that memory is something that is in your brain, <laughs> but not always. Certain actions, especially crafts and things you do with your hand or your body, needs to be sort of like moved from your brain to your hands, in this case, your muscles. A good example of muscle memory is when you're riding a bike. I mean, you cannot learn how to ride a bike by reading a book. I mean, theoretically, engineers could probably tell you that if the bike turns this much, you have to move your butt this much that way. and but you can't learn how to ride a bike academically. 
You need to train your body to do it. And the thing is, we don't think when we, drive, when we ride our bike. It's in our body, it's in our muscles. And that's the same thing with pottery, especially when you want to do repetitive throwing. You need to get it from your brain, <laughs> from your thoughts, into your hands. And there's only one way to do that. Exactly the same way you probably learned how to ride a bike. You have to do it a lot of time. You have to repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. Fail <laughs> lots of times, but repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. Once you've done the same shape, like a cup, that we're going to do now, many, many times, you start to get a routine, a certain way of doing it. You make this movement and this movement to center it, you make this movement to open it, this movement to uh, pull the wall. And the more times you make it, you find these uh, repetitive and identical ways of shaping the clay will also produce more or less identical pieces. And there's no easy way to accomplish that. In my case, I had to do literally hundreds of cups before I got even close to a state I could call muscle memory. But I think that is a very important uh, step in accomplish uh, this you know, identical type of pots. After a couple of trials and errors, <laughs> mostly errors, <laughs> um, I got to almost the shape and the size that I was looking for. This one is uh, done with 450 grams of stoneware. It is very groggy, so I can't make it super, super thin, but I will trim off something. I already took off some down here and I will trim the sides a little thinner. So it will end up about 300 grams or something after fire. It is a little more than 13 centimeter and um, and almost nine centimeter wide. I would like it to be maybe one centimeter wider, um, but with 30 centimeter high. So um, now I'm gonna adjust this uh, ruler. And I'm gonna set it to both the height and the width that I'm looking for. So in one pointer here, I don't know if you can see it here, but with just one pointer, um, I can I can uh, I can get a measure for um, for both height and width. So um, I think this is good. I don't want it to be very close because I need to to have room for it to wiggle a little bit. But I think this uh, this will be a good uh, pointer. Now, when you remove it, you have to be a little bit careful because <laughs> otherwise you will bump into um, to the ruler here and um, so just make sure that it's tight and it is secured this one have a very heavy foot so it won't move much if you don't then you can put a clamp on it or something so it does move so now we're ready for our repetitive throwing So now, I think we have the right height. Yeah, maybe it's a little bit more. Yeah, now it's good. I do want to um, exp 
bend it a little bit. Oh, see, that's what happens. <laughs> you have to be careful with this. See, I'm removing not a lot, but some grams down from here. I know <laughs> I should have pulled more of that clay up through the pot. Um, I'm just not good enough. So. <laughs> And as you see, I'm not the fastest thrower in the world. <laughs> I'm actually not fast at all. But I always, in the beginning, and this is a long time since I made this, uh, this type of pot, uh, it takes some time. And, and give it the time it takes. If you repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, I promise you, after a few hundred cups like this, it will be much faster. But it takes years of practice to get to the speed of professional uh, potters, professional um, production potters. I know potters um, that um, have worked in production lines that can do 50 cups like this per hour. So it's like a little more than a minute each. I won't even get close to that. But when I'm, I'm in good practice and uh, I've done a lot of them, I think I can make it do 10, 15 per hour, which to me is pretty good. But um, of course, nothing close to the real well-trained potters. So that's it. So this is some of the cups that came out of my session with repetitive throwing. And no, they're not identical. <laughs> like identical in the way that you get in Ikea. They're handmade. But I think they are close enough. If you look at the width, they are almost the same. The height is good. And they stack well. That's good enough for me. I made a bunch more than these. I put handles on some of them and I color them in different uh, glazes, but they all come out with the almost same uh, feel to them, same basic shape, height, and width. I hope that you learned a little bit from this video. The most important thing <laughs> is practice. The last part I was talking about, muscle memory, is the most important. You can use all the tools you want and all the tips and tricks, but it is a question of practicing. The putters, the very experienced potters you see on YouTube that are like throwing pots like this 
really, really fast and they're making them identical. One thing they have in common, they practiced a lot. I didn't practice even closely as much as they did. And I'm still doing okay, which is evidence that uh, even if you're not a full-time professional potter, you can still get closer to that similar type of repetitive drawing. So, um, yeah, I just hope you learned a little bit of my few tips here. And um, I will have a new video coming up next week, hopefully, <laughs> because I'm also going on a vacation next week um, here in Denmark. Um, I will probably do some video from down there. Um, let's see if it finished. So, um, see you next Sunday and uh, enjoy the summer. <laughs>